about how we as fans could get more fans into anime fandom. A lot of fans there. To be clear, the reason I'm asking is because there's a lot of talk about how the industry could get more fans. We've talked about that here on the channel. About what could be done to make anime appeal more to people and uh, what kind of shows could be made that would appeal more to folks. But I want to ask, what could we as fans do? How could we be holding the torch and getting more people to watch anime? And we've already got a great suggestion from Hemhoki in the chat room, as always, um, who says, I've been turning co-workers onto anime via Netflix. Shows like Blame, Expelled from Paradise, and my group's been expanding a little. Netflix is a great, great starting point. So there's so many... Uh, there, you know, there's enough anime on Netflix. It's not, not a massive catalog. But that definitely is a great place to start. I say, hey, you got, everyone's got Netflix. Just say, hey, go on Netflix and check this out. You know, watch this, go there. <laughs> I like Liquidus' idea that we, uh, uh, we all uh, dress up in, in white shirts and ties and go around door to door and knock on doors and say, hello, sir. We're here from the anime community. Do you have a moment to talk about anime? Do you know animal? Uh, do you know anime as your personal lord and savior? I think that's a good idea. That'd be kind of funny. Um, but uh, yeah, and th that's part of the, part of the thing, though. Is it, it's hard to imagine how you would actually how you'd actually do that. That's kind of what first comes to mind, right? Is going out and kind of people on the street and saying, "Hello, watch anime. Hello, watch anime. Hello, have you watched anime?" Uh, and obviously, that's not going to work very well. But what do you do? As Game Escape points out, there's still a lot of prejudice out there against the medium, which is certainly true. Um, and I think beyond just prejudice, there's just a lot of ignorance. A lot of folks who know very little, maybe they've just heard one or two things and they think it's not for them. You know, if all you know about anime is Naruto, you're probably not going to assume that anime is for you if you're a 45-year-old machinist. You know, the average 45-year-old machinist does not watch anime, not watch Naruto. Um, <clears throat> and then there's also the problem of the content, right? If I were a girl and I walked into somebody's house and I saw a wall scroll of a naked teenage girl, you know, um, I, w I would be turned off. Right, I would be creeped out. Um, so that's certainly an, uh, an interest. And again, you, you look at the you know, whole bunch of animation there. Um, and yeah, you have folks that uh, grow into the thought and they think it weird. So, so here's a valid point. I think to that point, I think we're not going to try to convert those people. I think we can set them aside and say maybe someday... But for now, they're not our target audience, and we need to go after the folks who are in the middle ground, who are you know, not fans, they're not prejudiced against it, but are reasonably, um, decently open to the idea. Uh, you got to pick your battles, and I think that's a battle that we're not going to win today. So when you have folks who, and, and so let's define our terms, I think you have, within that, you have sort of three grades. You have the folks who maybe have maybe they watched Pokemon growing up. Um, they've seen some anime. That they they maybe caught an episode or two of something. Maybe they have a friend who watches anime, but they're just not into it yet, right? They're they're the easy ones. There are the folks who are kind of on the other side where they have really no exposure to anime at all, and they've really heard about it. Maybe they've heard one thing. Um, you know, maybe they heard that they heard about the Ghost in the Shell movie, and they said the original has all these boobs in it, and they're like. Ant there's animation with boobs in it? That's weird. Um, and you know, they're not against it, um, but that, that's just kind of blowing their mind right now, right? And they're just, I don't know if this is for me. It's just a little, little weird. So that, that's, uh, you know, no prejudice yet. It, it's, uh, and then the folks kind of in the middle of that where they have maybe no exposure, um, maybe a little exposure, and but th there's, there's just nothing about it. They haven't found their anime yet. Nothing really appeals to them yet. Um... So we've got that, that sort of, um, those sorts of things. Um, 
So yeah, so now, now Game Escape, that's a, a good point. Miyazaki. Miyazaki is the classic intro point. But I would actually... I, I sympathize with your previous girlfriend's point. Miyazaki stuff isn't really very anime. It definitely doesn't follow a lot of anime cliches. It is not animated the way the typical anime TV series was. So I think anime... Um, I, I, I think Studio Ghibli is certainly a starting point. But it is not the ideal starting point that will naturally turn people into anime fans. You know, it's, it's just it's just off enough. It's like telling somebody, it's like trying to get somebody into American animation through Steven Universe, right? Where they might like Steven Universe, but that doesn't mean they're gonna like average Western animation either. <laughs> Female college friend borrowed Akira because uh, she asked for it. Next day, too much, too much, and I, again, I sympathize with her too. I'm like, for me, Akira is too much, too much. So it's a fair point, um, and that's a, another great point. Is that there are certain things that got people into anime because they because those works were extreme, because they were off the beaten path. Um, excuse me for a moment. Where that show, where you know, Akira got a lot of fans because it was it was violent, it was um, very mature and adult. And it wore that very much on its sleeve, and that appealed to a certain segment of the population that wanted something that was, you know, so extreme. Um, so I think you know, that is a potential for some people, but not for, you know, not for most, let's say, at this point. Ah. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> so you got those folks who are kind of anime-adjacent, or just kind of anime ignorant in the broadest sense. They just don't know about this stuff. Um, I, I, I don't think anybody in America has never heard of anime. Um, or is, you know, completely, you know, who is unaware that animation is made outside of the country. But, right. <clears throat> um, definitely harder with older folks uh, compared to younger folks. Uh, partly because there's been so much anime around. Um, and younger folks are just kind of closer to the animation medium. So, that's certainly a, a, a concern. Um, um, I, I like the idea of, uh, of Beck, actually, for the older crowd. I think, of the, I think somebody in their 40s <coughs> would totally connect with Beck. Because it is about, you know, being... It's about being a teenager, but it's about those very universal teenager themes of discovering music and trying to be part of a band and all that kind of stuff. I think that would kind of work. Um, I think the, you know, the stuff that, you know, the classic, I, I, don't, I would not show a 40-year-old necessarily Gundam Wing or Kakapta Sakura, right? That's just, you know, it might trigger, but I think that, that would actually work more. In, in fact, I mean, I could imagine, without getting too much into stereotypes, I can imagine a, a housewife getting more into K-On than into uh, Trigun. Right, because um, it's about eh, being high, being in high school, hanging around as a kid. Um, but I certainly, you know, I don't think Kaon is a, is a good place to start in general. <clears throat> but yeah, Raven, I think Beck is a is a is a great starting point for the the somebody who's just completely unfamiliar with this stuff, but could connect to those teenage themes. Um, another interesting question is whether the slice of life genre or the school life genre, which are kind of related. Um, whether those would be appropriate. I'm of two minds about that. On the one hand, I think a school life story, um, something that's just about, you know, th those, normal ex those normal experiences might appeal more to somebody because obviously you, you don't have ridiculous, you know, boob armor or giant laser swords or, um, you know, the, the really goofy stuff. It's, it's more relatable because it's about average people. But at the same time, it's more about Japanese school life, and so it's getting used to those differences. Um, and maybe that's not a problem. Maybe it's okay. There are some, you know, yes, there are some cultural differences, but that's just what you get used to watching those things. You tell people this is, you know, not set in America, so be aware that school is a little different. <clears throat> Indeed, Raven. If only there was a history of anime that just went through all this stuff, you could just point people to. That'd be awesome. That might go. Um, that's a great idea, Game Escape. Frame anime as a type of foreign cinema, which it fundamentally is. You're and it, it absolutely is foreign cinema. 
Um, it's far in animated cinema, right? But it is, um, it is that. Um, but the problem is you have to get past, and again, you know, I think Akira and Ghost in the Show will work for some people. You know, and you can find the folks who are into the geeky stuff, who are, you know, who want science fiction, who, you know, somebody who loves Transformers and uh, Pacific Rim, I think is a, a, is a good candidate for the first Ghost in the Shell movie, for example. Um, we even stand alone complex. So, you know, you can start there, but for, you know, for that middle ground person who is not into those things, I think Satoshi Kon's stuff, you know, Millennium Actress, I think you could, is definitely one of those foreign cinema things you could go with. Tokyo Godfathers. I've shown my parents Tokyo Godfathers, and they were both entranced. <clears throat> yeah, like Amelie, but with Japan. I think that's a great point. You're absolutely right. It is... It is very much like that. Amelie is, and I've, I've only seen bits and pieces of Amelie, but it is definitely not an American standard Hollywood film. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I almost wish someone would release a copy of Wings of Honey Misei where they just cut before he tries to rape that girl. <sighs> because, and, you know, I, I'm, I, mm, I understand author's intent and all that, and I'm sure it's there for a reason and so forth. Like that is the one thing that keeps that from being something I can just show people. Like this is this is about the space race. This is about dreams. This is about attempting new cool things. Mm. Um, I actually have that problem with Wolf Children, where I would show that to anybody except there's a scene near the beginning where clearly you know a girl has sex with a werewolf. And it's just off-putting, and you don't see anything. I mean, they're from they're from the shoulders up, um, and they just kind of you know they 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 go down. They they you know they're facing each other, and then they they recline, and then we cut away. But it's just that's that that's a little creepy to, to a lot of uh, a lot of Western people. And your Shars counterattack? No, that's tough. So what are some good anime films? Good. Um, but what are some what are some appropriate anime films for somebody who's not into anime, um, but I, but you know speaks more to that universal human condition? Um, I haven't seen The Boy and the Beast. I think that might be a good candidate. Um, the Girl Who Left Through Time, maybe, because it is very much about again high school life, but that more universal themes of high school life. Where I think people can get it. It's a little obscure. It's a little you know. The Girl Who Left Through Time is, is um, it is more, more like foreign cinema, so I think you can sell it more like, this is like Chocolat, right? Where you're not supposed to, sit, it, it's not a, a perfectly linear story. I agree, Blue Dragon, and, and again, I, I think those people we, we, you know, we ignore. The folks who, who say, oh, it's just cartoon, and can't take it seriously, okay, then this is not for you, right? We're not going to get everyone. Um, so we got to we got to find the people who are, are we got to target the folks who are more who are more open to it. Um, Pat Labor two, yes, that makes sense. The Pat Labor movies, the Oshi Pat Labor movies, I think, because they're you know there are giant robots in it, but that is more of a, um, <clears throat> um it is much more about the, the human drama. Okay, so folks didn't have a, a problem with that. Cool. Um, oh, that makes sense. So you tell them this is about, you know, these two people falling in love and having kids. And so you prepare them for that. Like, okay, well, obviously they're going to, you know, they're, they're going to they're gonna boink. That makes sense. So good question, Psycho New Type, and welcome, by the way. Um, how about introducing someone to anime with flashy action scenes to draw them in? It's a great point. I think, you know, action scene obviously is going to appeal to a, a, a somewhat younger audience. Um, but you're absolutely right. <clears throat> so, and I'm trying to think flashy action se sequences, and unfortunately I immediately jumped to Kill a Kill, which I would not recommend to the average non-anime fan. You know, they might get it, but it's like, that, that's, that's a lot to take in. So, flashy action scenes. What are some what are some good anime of flashy action? Actually, uh, you mentioned Appleseed. You know, I, I think the Appleseed CGI movies would work. Ghost in the Shell. Um, 
Yeah, and you're right, Hem. A lot of it does come down to genre. You know, you find a genre the person likes and says, okay, here's an anime in that genre. Um, you know, if you got somebody, you got somebody who has young kids, wolf children, um, even like, you know, school babysitters from this season, stuff where it's like that. Yeah, Ninja Scroll, eh, um, I think it's just too extreme. Um, yeah, eh, it's not really. And it's one of the problems is that action in anime has become very otaku focused, where. We tend to get action anime that are for otaku. I guess Attack on Titan is definitely an action series, um, but I think that is, you know, the 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 goriness of Attack on Titan just turning too many people off. It turns out it, it gets a lot of people interested. I mean, certainly the, it, Attack on Titan got a lot of new fans in. I think. Um, I, mean, I know quite a few people who were not into anime, and Attack on Titan was their their intro, and like, okay, I'm I'm in I'm in now. Um, Redline, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think Redline, thanks Wong Lee, welcome again. Uh, Redline is absolutely a great starter anime for somebody who, um, because, you know, there's a little nudity, but it's it's very much like R-rated Hollywood nudity. Um, you know, and, and the violence is very cartoonish in that sense. Again, sort of attack, you know, it's, it's, um... It's Hollywood action. It's Hollywood over-the-top, ridiculous car chase action. Um, let's see here. Rooney Kenshin. Yeah, Kenshin is... Kenshin's a tough one. I actually recommend Kenshin to parents whose kids are into anime as something they can watch together about a certain period in Japanese history uh, where it definitely has action. Um, but you kind of have to be... You kind of have to be ready to get excited about history for for Kenshin to, to to work for the average adult I think um, and the OVA is and especially the OVA actually you know, the OVA is very much set in this period with these characters and you're kind of expected to know what the Meiji Revolution was um, much as I love Kenshin and which just I, I, I think Kenshin should be like required viewing but Macross Plus maybe yeah Macross Plus Yeah, I've shown Macross Plus to people with, with success um, because it is more mature, sophisticated storytelling. Um, it has action, a lot of action animation, but it's, you know, again, it's it's not, it doesn't have fan service all over the place. In fact, they, they lead up to fan service and then cut away, which I think is hilarious. Blam, cool. I, I've not seen Blam. I need to do that. I, I need to jump on Blam's one of these days. I have the entire manga. I actually bought the entire manga twice. That's how much I love Blam. Um, so that's definitely a, an option. I bought, I, and I bought the original anime, come to that. I have that sitting around here somewhere. So that's a great point, I think, guys, to, to focus on genres that they like and find something that is reasonable in there. Um, oh, I took an interesting thought, Liquidus. Let's start with the live-action Rurouni Kenshin films. And then work back from there to the animation. Yeah, not a bad idea. I mean, those live action movies sure, sure do a great job of doing that. And I think that's more that's more palatable in the sense that we're more used to samurai movies. So I think you can get people into the samurai movie aspect. Um, I haven't talked about Cowboy Bebop. But I think, yeah, Cowboy Bebop's a, 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 special, um, a special case. Uh, partly because, again, I think... There's not a lot of other anime like Cowboy Bebop. It is kind of out on its own terms. Um, you know, when, when, when they watch Bebop and they're like, great, show me more stuff like that. I'm like, maybe Trigun, right? Um, I mean, you have kind of stuff like Darker Than Black and, and such, but it, yeah. Um, but I think Cowboy Bebop, and actually I have one of my bosses, he, uh, um, he, He's talked about possibly getting into anime, and I'm like, I think Bebop would be the right choice for him. Because he likes action movies, but there needs to be some depth to it. Um, he likes some characters, so we'll see where that goes. Um, yeah, Ghost in the Shell live action. I think Ghost in the Shell live action is a good case where you can ask somebody, did you see that, you know, did you see the previews for, the Ghost, for that Ghost in the Shell live action movie? And their reaction will tell you if that's an avenue to, to go. If they're like, oh yeah, that looked interesting. 
then you could be like, okay, then let's try that. Let's start with the Ghost in the Shell live action movie. Everybody's like, oh yeah, isn't there an anime of that? You know, I kind of like to, 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 to check in, to check that out. You know, I kind of like go, I like to go back to the original source material. You're like, okay, then we'll do the anime. Um, we could go there. I have not seen enough of Sword Art Online to, to comment on whether it would be a good, a good starting point. Um, that's a good question. Gonna make the mess team. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I definitely recommend that to get folks into Gundam. And getting them into anime with 8th MS team. Yeah, it's a war story, but it's grounded. I'm using the word grounded a lot. That's that's one of my new my new words, apparently. So yeah, I can see Gundam 8th MS team. Again, action. You definitely have action. And I think the first episode has a fair amount of action, too. So yeah, that'd be that'd be a good start. What about stuff for the somebody who wants something more, um, um, you know, less actiony? Somebody who wants something more relational or quirky, you know, like, something like um, you know, a, a foreign film, right? Yeah, grounded is my new moreover. You're absolutely right. My moreover is very grounded. Yeah, War in the Pocket. Eh. The only problem with War in the Pocket is it really assumes you understand the context of the Gundam universe and, and the One Year War. Uh, it's really hard to bring someone into into anime and into Gundam through War in the Pocket. Um, it just assumes, I think, a little too much. Much as I'm I'm blown away by War in the Pocket, that is that is a high water mark for anime in general. Huh. Um, okay, yeah, the, the, the fan service in, in Sword Art Online might be uh, too much for some. Yeah, so I, I think you're right. I think Sword Art Online is, is you know, it's not the first anime you show, but it, it's the, like the third. You know, it's, it's once, you've, once you've introduced them to anime, you're like, okay, here is more the main, yeah, you know, here's a mainline anime series. Kind of get you used to things, right? Um, like, I would not start somebody off with Haruhi Suzumiya. But I would be comfortable showing them that after, yeah, is there maybe their fifth anime series. Something like that. So is there something that's, that's more like a foreign film? Something that is, that is not action-y, not violent. Um, oh, that's fun, Liquidus. Great. That explains the doujinshi I once read. Anyway, um... There's, uh, yeah, what is, what is more on that line? Um, kind of the, kind of the Miyazaki thing. Uh, well, more the, the non-Miyazaki Ghibli stuff. You know, The Grave of the Fireflies, um, although not necessarily as depressing, but stuff that's more, um, more relational. More, um, stuff. Satoshi Kon? Air? Yeah, air might work. How... I mean, how anime cliche does Air get? Or, or Canon, or Clannad, or any of the other, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, um, key visual arts shows. Yeah, Paprika, I think would work. You have to warn people ahead of time about Paprika, but that would work. Um, Perfect Blue, definitely work, warn folks ahead of time about Perfect Blue. You know, let's not forget the rape scene. Um... Even though it's not actually rape. Desert Punk. I have Desert Punk. I've not watched Desert Punk yet. Looking over to the uh, the wall of the wall of manga for inspirations. You know, Oh My Goddess was one of the shows that got folks into it back in the day. I wonder if the Oh My Goddess TV series from a few years ago would work because it's. I mean, you know, there's fantasy, but it's very much sort of a, a, a domestic comedy. Really a sitcom. Eden of the East. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, it, it is, it, there's, there's a bit of sci-fi in there, but again, it's sort of Hollywood scale modern sci-fi, where there's these, these weird, you know, um, weird tech, but it's not, you know, blaster pistols and space travel. Um, please teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Please teacher isn't hear me at all. Um, I, mean, I, I, although I, I will say, you know, please teacher definitely does deal with, 
its characters and its storyline better than most harem series. Like, it is... It is like, okay, let's throw these characters in relationships and then have them actually have relationships and deal with the consequences of those. Um, you know, Police Teacher is the only... Um, is it the only anime TV series I can think of where this has happened? It's the only one that comes to mind. Um, yeah, Police Teacher is the only anime TV series I can think of where two teenage characters have sex and she gets pregnant. And, like, they deal with that. So, spoiler alert. <clears throat> and it's not, it's not fan service at all. Um, in fact, you never see them wearing anything less than a yukata. Okay, Initial D. Yeah, Initial D got a lot of fans. Um, the problem with Initial D is that it has, it has not aged well. Um, a friend of mine watched, uh, started watching Initial D uh, a couple months ago. And we were like, ooh, this would be hard to get people into. Uh, the character the, the character designs just have not aged well, and, and the CG of the cars it's actually okay, um, but it definitely is not as as amazing as it, as it was when we first uh, when it first came out. Um, good point, Game Escape. You also do have to give them a little primer on how anime is a different medium, and how it, it's more like you say it's more about the interplay of the art. It's more about the, the visual image, the still image, and appreciating what the expression is on is on the characters' faces. As opposed to how a character dances across the... I'm doing over here and I'm over here and... Oh, oh, there's a bookcase! You know, that's, that's not anime. <clears throat> but yeah, Eden of the East is a, is a, is a, is a good one. Um, again, there's a, a little sort of suspense action, but nothing... You know, Jason Bourne, it is not. It's a shame there's so little Jose. Yeah, the Castlevania anime was certainly popular. And I think the Castlevania anime was a great idea because it, it does... It has that crossover potential. We get the, the folks who are into the video game. They'll watch the Castlevania anime series because it's Castlevania. And it's, you know, that's a good match tonally in terms of art. So that's a, that's, a, that's a great way of saying, hey, if you like this video game, go there. If you like gothic horror, go to Castlevania. And I, I've not seen the Castlevania anime series yet. But yeah, that's, it's, that's a great point. There's a lot of horror... Well, mm, for folks who like horror, there is a not insignificant amount of horror anime. So that's another th case where you're like, if you like horror and you've kind of already seen Nightmare on Elm Street 38 times, um, here's another genre that has a fair amount of horror and thriller stuff. Mushishi. Yeah. Yeah, I think Mushishi is a good one for adults. Because it is... Twilight Zone in feudal Japan, basically. Would anime movies be necessarily a better choice to show to people than episodic series due to being shorter and easier to consume, asks Karyon. Good question. Um, I think, you know, personally, I think if I'm going to get somebody into anime, I think I'm going to have to start with a movie. Um, I don't think, you know... It might work to start with a TV series, but I think you're right that it would be better to, if you can, you know, do one movie first, and then go from there. And there are exceptions. Like, like Bebop, I think you can totally start somebody with because each episode, um, almost every episode is self-contained, so you can watch whatever that first episode's name is, and if they like it, you can, you can be like, okay, great, there are more episodes, but you've now got, you know, you know... Um, that episode is under your belt, and if you want to move on, that's fine, right? There's there's no sense of, oh my gosh, I have to know where the the plot of all of this goes. Um, but for most shows where there's definitely a, a longer story arc, you're right. I would probably start initially with a movie. And again, like, you know, not Miyazaki, I think. <laughs> Satoshi Kon definitely is a good starting point. Um, <clears throat> I think also OVAs. We, we, we certainly go with, with, um, with any short OVA like Macross Plus, where okay, it's it's a that's a three hour commitment maybe. That's that's something you can definitely do compared to everything else. <clears throat> Excuse me. Spragon, read or die. Yeah, read or die. I, I showed read or die the OVA recently, and um, like I had to say, you know, there, there's there's the the opening credits which has all the, the, the sort of weird cut out nudity. 
Um, and there's a little bit of fan service with Nancy, but she's very much a she's a she's a fan service character and kind of a Hollywood fan service character, right? Where we're all used to the big breasted character who wears tight clothes as just a thing, uh, and they even make fun of that in 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 the OVA. So you're right. I think it definitely works. And Read or Die has that kind of James Bond international espionage um, stuff to them. Right, yeah, I, I think FMA is a, a really tough, tough place to start people. I mean, FMA has the advantage that, again, the, those first few episodes are so episodic, you can watch a few episodes and be like, okay, I, I get these characters, I get the situation they're in, but I've gotten a couple little little storylines with them, and now I know, okay, I need to finish them, or I, I don't have to. Um, Tenji Moyo. Hmm. Now, I think T Tenji Moyo has too much fan service in the OVA 1, certainly. Um, and it's really hard getting them into OVAs 2 or th into the other OVAs or TV series. Um, and the movies do kind of assume that you know the Tenji universe. Um, again, it was, it was <laughs> it's what got, one of the things that got me into anime. But, I don't know. I, I think it's, it's hard to grab the average person off the street with Tenchi Moyo. Same thing with Ranma One Half. I think, you know, Ranma One Half got a lot of fans back in the day because it was different. Because it was not G.I. Joe or uh, My Little Pony. Um, but it's just such its own thing that it's, it's, it's hard to, you know, it's one of those things where you may know a person where you think they're going to love Ron Mo and Half, right? But it's idiosyncratic compared to other things. I don't know. Um, I, mean, I, I do feel like there's a lot of, of slice of life shows you could start people with, um, or you know, slice of life stories you could start people with that would, would make sense for them. It's, it's surprising now that I think about it that there are very few slice of life movies. Um, is the K-On! movie, which I have not seen for some reason, um, how much do you need to know about K-On! to watch the K-On! movie? Would that be a good starting point? <clears throat> yeah, uh, FLCL. FLCL is a very odd duck. Again, I think, odd, I think FLCL is like one and a half in that, in that sense, where... You probably know somebody for whom Furry Curry, Furry Curry will be perfect, but I wouldn't recommend it to the average American, I don't think. Um, yeah, and that's the thing. I, I, like I said earlier, or like we were talking about earlier, I think Tenchi would be like my third or my fifth introduction for them. It wouldn't be my first, necessarily. Yeah, Furry Curry's hard to track, and it's just, it's just weird, right? Intentionally weird. It is, in, it is intentionally messing with your head, and that's part of the appeal. It's part of the fun. Um, but it, it, it is one of those sort of things where if you know somebody who's into, like, weird cinema, who, who likes, um, very off-the-beaten-track films, I think Furry Curry is a great choice of saying, okay, give this a try. And Furry Curry has the advantage that it is, while being oddball, it is close enough to anime in, in like, some of its characterizations and things like that. You, you <coughs> excuse me. You can connect. <coughs> sorry. Uh, you can connect it more closely to n normal anime, to your average anime series. I think it's it's a it's a shorter jump from Furikuri to Sword Art Online, right? Than um, Perfect Blue to Sword Art Online. Steam Boy. I've not seen Steam Boy. But Steam Boy, from what I've seen, I think might be a good, a good, good start. Um, thinking what else? There's obviously a lot of like kids movies that I think would work. Um, it's a shame that the Magic Treehouse movie never got dubbed, because I think that's the kind of thing that you, you could show to a kid and be like, okay, more of that, please. Summer Wars. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think Summer Wars has anything I'd, I'd have problems. I, I, I'd probably tell the average person to be aware, you know, Japanese um, houses have mixed bathing. So there's a, you know, a quick shot of a, of a couple of kids in a bath. 
and kind of running around near a bath. Um, so just, you know, just be aware of that. Um, but there's nothing, you know, nothing happens. Um, and other than that, yeah, there's nothing, you know, there's no real violence. There's no sexualization. And, and there's no even sexualization of any of the characters, you know. Um, they're just people. Yeah, I think Summer Wars is, it would be a, a good start. Very good start. And it, it is more laid back, more, more slice of life, you know, until the evil satellite tries to destroy the world. Um, <laughs> take over the world, kind of. Well, no, the virus starts it. Well, it's Summer Wars. <clears throat> I think Summer Wars, unfortunately, does have the, the, the possibility of turning off people who, who recognize the internet tech side of things. We're like, oh, it's another, it's another thing about the internet. Right. Um, but I think that that's unlikely. I think Hosoda, Momoro Hosoda's stuff would be a good start. Like we said, Wolf Children, um, Summer Wars, Girl Who Left Through Time, Boy and the Beast. Yeah, I think pretty much any of his stuff would be a good... And it's also, like, you know, again, a good thing for, like, somebody who is who has kids, who has a family. Um, I think they could get into those those movies. That's a good one. So then, okay, so let, let's move on from there. So, yeah. So we identified some, some anime we can start with. So how do we do this, right? Do you just walk up to somebody and say, hey, watch this thing? Um, do you start a club? Do you... Um, what, what do you do? And I ask because... I know folks, and I've had some experience with this, where a friend of mine started, um, got into an anime club, I started an anime club, twice, actually, um, and sometimes those work really well, sometimes they don't. You know, there are some clubs, actually my friend, my friend got involved in an anime club, and, you know, the advantage of an anime club is you can show a lot of stuff, and you can kind of work people in and get them used to anime. And it's literally just a matter of finding a space in which to do it. You know, you can do that at a public library. You can do that at a maker space. You can do that um, um, anywhere that has, you know, a room that you can grab for a while. And you don't even have to spend any money on it. The issue there is getting people, right? Is getting enough people to show up. But the funny thing is now, I mean, <laughs> excuse me, sorry. <coughs> ah. Gosh. Just die in here. I'm clearly not very grounded. I'll cut that out in post. There's, um... Um, you know, I, I feel like we could do more than just talk to close friends of ours, um, or close acquaintances, if you will, to grow the hobby, right? Somebody started all these conventions. These were all just things back in the day. These were all just ideas that somebody said, hey, let's do a convention, and it grew from there. So what about starting with a local anime club? It meets somewhere. There's actually a local convention that is run by a local anime club. It's pretty large now, too, the convention. But just, you know, every... I think every month, they get they get together at a, at a library. And they show anime. And th that's the other cool thing, is that... Like, Funimation will send you discs of anime if you have an anime club. You just have to submit links, or you have to submit, submit like, a form to them. And they'll put you into their, their system, and they will start sending you anime to show. Um, and obviously you have to be, you know, careful about that. You have to, have to do the right thing. You can't just claim to have a club and then get a bunch of free anime. But I think that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Imagine starting an anime club and, and having an excuse to watch anime. Having a thing where you're showing up every week and watching, watching this stuff. You get through a lot of anime that way. And you get other people to talk about it. Now, the issue there is audience. Uh, the problem I had with the, uh, the, the later anime club I started is I had a lot of, uh, 
a lot of interest from people, from people, but it turns out everyone wanted different stuff. So I had one person who wanted you know, stuff that was appropriate for toddlers, and some people that wanted stuff that was, that was you know, um, aimed straight at teens. Like, they wanted just fairy tale every, every week. And I had folks who wanted cerebral adult fair, and if I showed one, then the others wouldn't show up, and they would, like, stop coming. Right? And if I switched to something else, then the first one would stop coming. So that's hard. Glad to hear that game escape. But I, I wonder, um, and part of the problem I also have is that, or th that I had, is that I did not really advertise it. I, I put up a thing on Meetup, and I got quite a few people, actually. Um, but it, it was finding that core folks who were interested in the same stuff that was a challenge. Um, but no, I mean, we, we had a significant number of folks at, at our thing who preferred to watch anime as a, in a group. Because then you actually, you know, had somebody to explain things to you. And you weren't just completely lost. When, it, when a show came on, and you're like, why are they doing that? Somebody could just say, oh, they, for this. Right, having senpais are actually useful. Um, but yeah, you know, the, the, um, getting an initial library is an issue. I mean, I would say if you're doing something like like that, I would be a lot more forgiving of somebody who downloads the shows off the internet, right? Especially if it's just for a a showing of something. Um, I think that's that's a more reasonable thing to do when you're in that, that situation. Where you're like, okay, we're going to watch this thing, and yeah, you know, <laughs> it's hard to come by these things. But then again, like I said, you can, you can get on a Funimation's list. I think, I think several of the other companies have these libraries that they can uh, do. And these days, too, if you're doing something like this, you can often, um, you can get on the library's, like, own Wi-Fi, and then, you know, do Crunchyroll, or what have you. Um, and they got tons of stuff. So I, I think there, there are now increasing options to get on the internet. But I think that's something to think about, is that I think we could, we could do more to get that out there. So then here's the, here's the, the bigger question. Um, beyond starting an anime club or a convention or whatever, um, what could we do in general... Um, just to improve the opinion of people about anime and anime fans, right? Like, how, how do we do outreach in a way that make people say, oh, anime fans are cool people. Oh, that anime fandom, they're really, they're, they're doing neat stuff. Um, you know, how do we decrease, the, like Ken Hokey says in the chat room, uh, anime is still an off area for people, I think. Some people get embarrassed when anime is brought up in public. We have a very small interest space to cater to in, in regards to genres. So how do we decrease that embarrassment? How do we make it okay and normal to talk about anime in public? Stickers? <laughs> I think, you know, I, I think that is true. I think wearing our anime fandom a little more publicly is good. You know, don't go into work wearing a Pikachu full body, you know, hoodie, right? Um, you know, don't cosplay you know, to work. That's, that's going a little overboard. Um, but having a badge, having, a having a, an anime sticker on a laptop, especially if it, if it, you know, it's not, you know, the girls from Con Coley all across the top of your, your thing. If you do that, that's great. But you know, I'm, I'm saying, you know, you can do that or you can go a little more subtle. That, both of those work. Um, like Hem says, you know, have a, a Dragon Ball Z, you know, wear a Dragon Ball Z t-shirt to work, especially on Casual Friday, um, or to school, you know, um, um, get an anime bag and, and, and wear an, uh, uh, carry an anime messenger, messenger bag around, <laughs> sorry, when you're, uh, when you're doing things, um, read manga in public, you know, next time you're on the tra <laughs> train, bring, bring a, um, br bring a volume of manga, and yes, somebody's gonna look at you. You're being looked at. How horrible. You know, but putting it out there in public, somebody's going to see that. Some 13-year-old's going to see you reading manga and say, oh, 
That's the thing people do. Maybe I'll read manga now. Maybe I'll give that a try. Right? I think being a little more public with, with, with anime fandom makes sense. I have a, a Lane Messenger bag that I, okay, I don't use all the time, but I, I often have with me. When, and, um, you, you know, if I go to a, a convention, I bring the messenger bag, and, like, that's what I have with me, um, you know, walking to and from the hotel and all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you're drinking beer with friends, have an anime-related cup or drink coffee from an anime-related mug at work. I think that totally works. You know, if it's appropriate for your workspace, have an anime figurine. Not a sexy one. Yeah. But, uh, you know, find an anime, uh, 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 an appropriate anime-themed uh, figurine. That'd be hilarious, you know. Here's my Queen's Blade figurine. Now, let me explain to you who this character is. No. Uh, we need to talk. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you wear anime shirts, um, you know, to casual events and parties. I mean, you can, you can totally do that. And that, that, that'll help break down those barriers and get people used to it. And the other nice thing about t-shirts is that everybody wears, you know, some themed t-shirt these days. Right? Everybody's just used to the fact that, okay, everyone has their little fandom or their little interest, um, or they're making some kind of joke on their t-shirt. So an anime t-shirt is, is very, you know, will fit in very well. I think you're right, Hemoki. Like, a, a Gundam model on a computer desk makes a statement, and a, a nice one. Because Gundam models are, you know, high quality, um, and, you know, they look snazzy, I think. They, they're, definitely, they're definitely geeky. But somebody looks at that and doesn't, you know, that doesn't send the same message that a, you know, a, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon body pillow sends, right? Yeah, FMA and SAO sh shirts. That's great. Get questions all the time about that. And I think that's the other key, is that when somebody asks you about that, you know, then you can say, oh, it, um, uh, it's a really cool anime series about this, you know, this, this, this teenager who made this really bad mistake and is trying to make up for it. Right? Um, or this kid who gets trapped in an MMO. Um, oh, really? That's interesting. Uh, yeah, it's an anime series. Uh, and, and just, you know, Follow up on that conversation. I think that really, really works. Um, just get folks get folks uh, aware of it, and then again, offer to show people things. The other thing I found um, is to be prepared to be. Um, I want to say insistent on things in the sense that if somebody says, "Oh, I'd like to watch that," then be prepared to say, "Okay, cool." Um, you know, are you free this Friday? We, we, you know, we can, you can come over to my place and I'll show it to you. Um, and, you know, follow, be prepared to follow up, I should say. A lot of folks are interested, but it takes a little more work than just, you know, a sentence or two to set up an actual movie night. So you sometimes have to do a little bit of prodding to remind them of, oh yeah, oh yeah, that thing. Oh yeah, let me, let me, let me put that on the calendar. And like, they do want to do it. Uh, you know, you're not being, uh, you know, forceful about it. Um, and if, you know, if, if you keep asking and they keep kind of pushing you off, you can say, hey, you, know, you don't want to do this, it's, that's totally fine. Um, but um, I actually have some friends who, who wanted to watch this, uh, wanted to watch Kadocha, the anime series. And they came over to, to watch it um, twice now. And it's one of those things where I just have to keep reminding them. And if I remind them once or twice, then, oh yeah, then they schedule a day and we do it. But it just takes a little bit more work. Um, right, you don't want to overload the person. But you want to have the information in your head. So when they ask a question, you can answer it with a sentence. And then, you know, move on the conversation from there. Um, but, uh, you know, in, in other words, the, the danger is somebody is, you wear this with pride. Somebody comes up and says, what is that? And you go, like, oh, it's, it's, it's an anime. They go, oh, okay, what's it about? Uh... Uh, uh, this guy who, uh, uh, you know, it helps to just think through your first answer to that question. <laughs> um, so you have that ready, um, but you're absolutely right. You don't then launch into a half hour explanation of the plot of uh, Full Metal Alchemist or what have you. But, uh, uh, but yeah, just, you know, 
unfortunately, the reality for most of us, if not all of us, is that this stuff is, um, is that getting together to do stuff just requires effort. And it's often just a little more effort than one or two sentences and putting something in, in the calendar. So just be ready to, to have to remind somebody or ask again, uh, and that's totally fine. Um, just be aware of that. This has been a great conversation. I want to thank you all for uh, delving into this with me. I think there is stuff we can do to make the fandom uh, bigger in socially appropriate ways. And uh, I hope you will join me next time to talk about more um, about uh, anime and the stuff we love. So thank you all very much.